Hello and person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries in regards to the interstellar medium and its potential effects on planet Earth, and specifically the medium surrounding the solar system that basically the solar system is flying through, and how all of this might have changed a few million years ago for reasons we still don't understand. But according to the recent study you can find any description, there's actually maybe a chance that approximately 2 to 3 million years ago, the interstellar medium dramatically changed the entire solar system, which potentially led to dramatic changes on planet Earth. But first, what exactly is interstellar medium, and what's the location of the solar system in relation to everything else around us? Now we've actually discussed this beautiful map you see right here, in one of the videos you can find in the description, but this essentially shows you the sun in relation to a lot of other stars and various clouds around us. And today based on a lot of different studies, we're pretty certain that there are at least two clouds around us, with the solar system potentially leaving the local cloud and entering what's known as a G cloud, the cloud really close to us where Alpha Centauri is located as well. And these clouds are part of ISM, interstellar medium, a lot of ancient gas moving extremely fast, which when colliding sometimes creates shock waves, which result in a lot of different effects, and when enough of this gas collides, it can even lead to new star systems and new planets. With a lot of this turbulence potentially formed by various powerful stars nearby, but also by ancient supernova and the interaction with much larger molecular clouds. And while currently the sun is traveling through local interstellar cloud, which seems to be some kind of a irregular clump of warm neutral hydrogen at least a few light years across. And we've discussed some of the potential explanations of how this formed a while back. The video in the description talks about this more. And so basically here this bubble expanded over millions of years and we seem to be right in the middle of it. But even today it's a little bit difficult to establish if any of this has any effect on the planets. Does any of this have any effect on planet Earth? And more specifically, do climatic conditions on Earth change as a result of the solar system traveling through the galaxy? So for example, as the sun travels through various interstellar clouds and potentially enters much denser regions, does this actually do anything to the sun or to planet Earth? Well, first a quick side note. The answer is we still don't know. As a matter of fact, proving any of this would be extremely difficult, but one of the recent studies discusses a few correlations and tries to imply that the answer might be yes, there might be an effect after all, and specifically an effect on the heliosphere of the solar system, which then affects the planets. And so let's briefly discuss heliosphere first. Heliosphere, which we previously believed looks like this, is essentially a kind of a magnetosphere or even an atmospheric layer around the sun. It's essentially a kind of a bubble formed by the pressure from the sun as it travels through interstellar medium and specifically formed by the solar wind that actually protects the entire solar system from huge amounts of cosmic ionizing radiation, but also prevents a lot of particles from the outside from ever getting into the solar system. And interestingly, based on previous observations and studies by the Voyager probes, the same researchers also discovered that the heliosphere is more likely to be this shape, or basically some kind of a croissant shape, as opposed to an actual sphere. Which of course implies extremely complex interactions between solar wind and the interstellar medium. But now the same researchers were able to analyze something else about the heliosphere and specifically discover its interaction with one of the clouds around us approximately 2 to 3 million years ago. And so here the researchers looked back in time and used computer models to try to discover what happened to the solar system approximately 2 million years ago. But they also mapped the path of an unusual formation known as the local ribbon of cold clouds. Here's an actual image of this, as visible in a hydrogen survey known as HI4PI. And essentially this is a large and very dense, very cold cloud made entirely out of hydrogen. It's not particularly big, but it's pretty dense. And the simulations here discovered that the solar system might have actually passed through these clouds for at least a few hundred thousand years or possibly even a million years. Which essentially meant that the heliosphere very likely interacted with this dense cloud for a relatively long time. And so based on previous models of the modern heliosphere, the researchers wanted to discover 
What would actually happen to the heliosphere if it suddenly slammed into this thick cloud? In terms of the actual thickness, it's very similar to a typical molecular cloud where we usually find a lot of star formation, but here it's just the size is really small. This is like a hundred times smaller than a typical molecular cloud. And so because the density here is up to 20,000 times larger, it would actually dramatically change the heliosphere, with the model suggesting that its total size would decrease from approximately 80 astronomical units down to about 0.2 astronomical units, suggesting that not a single planet in the solar system would now be protected or covered by anything or essentially suggesting that all planets would now be fully exposed to the interstellar medium. And that of course includes higher radiation, but also a lot of materials such as iron-60 that usually represent various leftovers from a lot of supernova. And signs of this iron-60 from approximately 2 to 3 million years ago have actually been reported by a lot of studies out there, but previously it was assumed that it was maybe because of the nearby supernova maybe 6 to 10 million years ago, not so far from planet Earth. But according to researchers from this study, based on the layout of nearby clouds, it would be difficult to explain this if a supernova happened relatively recently. Although here, another side note, there are studies out there that do explain these observations with supernova relatively well as well. Once again, some of the videos in the description talk about this a little bit more. But nevertheless, we now have at least one more potential explanation for all of these observations of iron-60 deposits that don't require a supernova nearby. With the explanation being that it might have been the result of a major collapse of the heliosphere for at least a few hundred thousand years that very likely exposed all of the planets to interstellar medium. And if that's the case, it's not entirely clear what this actually did to planet Earth. Now in this study they do actually make implications on the Earth's climate, possibly even suggesting that the ice ages might have begun as a result of this, but all of this is of course just speculation for now, mostly because all of this is just correlation. Even today we still have no idea why the ice ages began so suddenly, approximately 3 million years ago, and why they're still going on even today. As a matter of fact, we're technically now in the interglacial period and chances are another ice age is going to start in the next 30,000 years. But because we're pretty far away from this cloud, it will be difficult to explain why the ice ages never stopped. Nevertheless, it might have had some effects on the planet and because of higher irradiation of the upper atmosphere, this could have affected things like the ozone layer and even the chemical reactions in the upper atmosphere that could then change the climate. But figuring out these effects, or figuring out how this affected the planet, is of course the very important part. But having this evidence that the Earth's environment might have changed 2 million years ago as a result of the location in the galaxy is actually really interesting. Around this time this is of course where our species has gone through some dramatic changes and eventually evolved into Homo sapiens, acquiring all of the skills we have today, and though a lot of this was obviously the result of various mutations, we still don't really know if the increased radiation during this time played any role in our evolution. And so in essence, all this study shows right now is a potential change of the heliosphere that might have influenced the planet in some ways, potentially increasing various deposits such as iron-60 and plutonium-244, the isotopes of which have been discovered in various locations from around this time. But whether any of this connects to the changes in the climate and the evolution of our species is of course not a question we can answer. But what this paper can answer is that it's most likely going to happen again in the next few million years. Which basically suggests that the heliosphere of the solar system is a very dynamic phenomenon and seems to change quite a lot. Although right now the scientists are focusing on even more distant past, going back in time millions of years by using various data from the Gaia telescope. And that's because by finding another cloud and possibly connecting this to even more fossil records, the researchers behind the study can actually establish this as an actual phenomenon that happens to the solar system every once in a while. And if this affects our planet, it might also be able to explain certain events, certain climatic events that could never be explained in any other way. And so definitely a pretty interesting discovery, but it still needs to be scrutinized by a lot of other scientists to see if there's maybe additional explanations and to most importantly see if these observations can be maybe explained by a nearby supernova after all. On that note, once there are some additional discoveries, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, 
Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.